Well, Tropical Storm Alex is the talk of the Gulf Coast. Where will it head and how soon will it become a hurricane? Tonight we have complete coverage on Weather Center, including Jim Cantori live along the Louisiana coast. Jim. Yeah, hey guys, here in Venice, Louisiana, we couldn't be farther away from where this thing is tracking Alex, right? But you know what? There are going to be impacts here, and we're talking about it coming up. Well, all signs point to Alex becoming the first hurricane of the 2010 Atlantic season, and it could happen by tomorrow morning. Welcome to Weather Center. I'm Alexander Steele. And I'm Chris Warren. The Weather Channel is the Hurricane Authority, and tonight we have live team coverage, including Jim, live in Louisiana. Jim. And hey, guys, yeah, wind over waves produces wave action already four to six feet where they're trying to collect the oil. Very, very close to critical here. We'll let you know how this storm is going to impact the cleanup efforts. They already are. We'll talk about it. Stick around. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Well, officials in some South Texas towns are already telling people to be ready to move. The mayor of South Padre Island is suggesting a voluntary relocation. Public works crews have already started moving trash barrels and signs off the beach. And a Cameron County judge ordered a voluntary relocation of all high-profile vehicles, like RVs, to relocate to higher ground. And that same judge is also asking anyone with big commercial vehicles who could help during an evacuation to register with the city, just in case. All right, let's head to Chris now for where Tropical Storm Alex is right now. And let's take a look right here. You can see this storm is moving back over water right now. And as of the latest advisory, 60 mile an hour sustained wind. So we are talking about tropical storm, Alex. And as it continues to move more and more on over the waterways here, over these warm Gulf waters, this storm is expected to strengthen. One of the big questions here, of course, is where is it going? Taking a look at the computer models throughout the day today, each individual line here indicates a different computer model, basically a different forecast from a computer. And when they're all together, it gives you a good idea that, you know, which direction they're going. And so uh, even the path right here takes it into portions of Mexico and it also takes it into Texas as well. So uh, we know at this point, I mean, this can change, but at this point, that is what uh, it looks like where it is heading, possibly Texas and Mexico. Now, next question. How strong is it going to be when it makes it there? And as we take a look here, you can see we could be talking about Hurricane Alex by tomorrow with winds getting up around 74 miles an hour sustained wind and then possibly even stronger than that. And it potentially, with this forecast anyways, could be making landfall as a hurricane. Alex? All right, thank you very much, Chris. Well, of course, the big question is, how will the storm impact the oil spill? Well, that's one of the reasons Jim is in Louisiana tonight and along the coast. All right, Jim, talk about the concerns right now. Well, Alexander, it's, it's, it's a higher water level and it's wave action. Those are the two big things. And, and it's like, well, how, you're like, Jim, how can we get waves with this thing so far away? It's hundreds of miles away off to my southwest, as Chris was just showing you. But there's a pressure gradient. There's always a pressure gradient in the tropics this time of the year. And when you have a tropical system, it tightens up that gradient. And unfortunately, the apex of that tightening is coming right over the horizon spill. And in, uh, blowing it, if you will, and blowing a lot of the concentrated oil closer and closer to the coastline. Now, as long as we have waves that are continuing to come in. You can see this graphic in through here. As long as we continue to keep the waves coming through, that means as the tides come in and out, they don't retreat as quickly and they don't go out all the way. So you wind up with a higher mean tide level and each successive, uh, if you will, wind that blows on shore, as long as it's sustained wind, helps to hold that water up. And that's what we expect to happen. And that's why we have those coastal flood watches out all along the Louisiana coastline. We could see water as high as two to three feet, which is from where I'm standing. I mean, you don't have a lot of room here. We're out here in the southeast part of Louisiana where we are surrounded by water. So two feet means a lot of these roads will be impacted and underwater. And unfortunately, Alex, as we know, there is a tremendous amount of oil sitting on top of this water, not too far offshore. As uh, Governor Jindal uh, got a chance to see himself today, waves bring in the oil. The water rises, it brings it in farther inland, and of course when it retreats, it just leaves all that oil behind. So a huge concern in through here, and amazingly we are dangerously close certainly to seeing some of the wave action that's going to be out toward the collector barge, uh, getting as high enough to potentially shut down those operations. We don't think they will get that high. We don't think they're going to get that high. So we're talking about 12 feet here. We're expecting 8 to 10 feet, but doggone it, is that just dangerously close or what?
Oh, certainly. And Jim, you know, I know that you sat on the plane next to Craig Fugate. So talk about what he said. Anything kind of really strike you? Yeah, you know, Alexander, it, 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 you know, he's, he's talking about the scope of this oil spill. And he was, you know, talking, you know, it was amazing because I saw him at the airport. We talked outside the gate. We all got on the plane. <laughs> he sat right down next to me. We didn't know we were sitting next to each other. So we got a chance to talk about this. And, and he's obviously very, very concerned. How do you bring in now, you know, an oil evacuation in addition to regular evacuation? He goes, Jim, quite honestly, we're going to treat it the same way. Water still comes in with storm surge. That still poses the biggest danger. So with or without the oil, we need to get people out of harm's way. If there's an evacuation order issued, guess what? We're going to get people out of harm's way. All right. Thanks so much, Jim, live in Venice, Louisiana. We'll go back to Jim, of course, coming up. But first, let's go back to Chris, who has now more on how you can stay ahead of this tropical storm. And Alex, of course, new information is constantly coming in about the storm. We should get the National Hurricane Center's advisory on Alex by 8, if not sooner. And of course, we'll bring it to you as soon as it's in. And hurricane hunters are flying recon into the storm right now, and they're supposed to be in the center right in the middle of it by 8. We'll keep you updated on that as well. Plus, you can always count on the Weather Channel's tropical updates at 50 after every hour. And as we continue to track, Alex, remember, the Weather Channel is the hurricane authority. Count on us for in-depth analysis. We'll track the latest developments, bring you the latest watches and warnings, and you can always get 24-7 coverage at our website, weather.com. Alex? All right, thanks, Chris. Well, coastal families aren't the only ones who need to be concerned about the track of our tropical storm. Coming up, our hurricane expert explains why inland areas, especially in the southern U.S., need to be prepared.